Hi guys, uh, good evening. Uh, am I visible and audible? Am I live? Uh, just give me a confirmation on that and we shall start uh, with uh, the part 3. So today is going to be a short 30 minute session that we are having uh, on the top 100 images. Uh, so this is part 3. We will be continuing from where we left off. In case you are seeing it uh, for the first time, make sure that you also check out the first two parts that we have done uh, on YouTube itself. Yeah, so these are all the must know topics and images that you know figure most frequently in the exam and that is what we are discussing. Uh, my name is Zainab and I have done my MBS and MD in radiology from Ames, New Delhi. And uh, let's begin then. Uh, so this is the schedule for the upcoming classes. So we shall be continuing with this series um, for the next three days as well. Yeah, it was initially planned as a three-part series, but I think it will be a six or seven-part series. Yeah, so we shall be continuing with it in the coming days. Uh, the time shall be 5 p.m. from tomorrow onwards. Yeah, so I'll keep you guys informed on the group. Apart from that, uh, tomorrow and day after, we have a plus class for subscribers on Unacademy. Uh, which is going to be an integrated session with medicine uh, with Dr. Santosh. Uh, we shall be discussing stroke and pancreatitis and a few other emergencies in both of these classes because these are very, very important. After that, on Sunday, we have a class on ballistics. So we are continuing with MKT, which is the must-know 50 topics, you know, which, are, which we are doing in detail. Then we have CA cervix and we have embryology. So this is the... Uh, these are the classes that are lined up. Apart from that, today we shall be meeting quickly after this class is over at 6 o'clock for the most important stuff in PSM, which you, which gets you short, short, you know, not one, but two to three questions at least in a names exam, which is epidemiology screening and biostats, right? So quite a big ambitious task ahead of ourselves uh, for two hours. So two hours of time, uh, which is going to get you a lot of questions, right? So that is what we have planned from 6 to 8 o'clock today. Okay. Yeah, these classes will be saved. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You can check them out from uh, YouTube. All right. Uh, this is the, today is the last day, 31st of August for Unlock 20. So uh, for plus subscription, you will get 35% of, which is quite a big number. And for Iconic, where, where you get Prep Ladder as well as an Academy, you will get 20% off, right? So in case any of you are looking to subscribe, if you apply the code, which is my name, ZURA, you'll get that off. Okay. So that is about uh, the offer ongoing and this is the batch which has uh, most recently been launched on integrated and system wise revision and QBank uh, 2.0 is coming. Yeah, I have not posted annotated PDF of yesterday because what I am doing is I am basically adding on to the same PDF. So this is yesterday's stuff, right? So what I will do is once all 100 images are annotated, I will just post that. I mean, I think that works better. Yeah. Uh, for you and me. Otherwise, it will be like other the five PDFs that I have to share. So, I will just share the combined one in total. Okay. Does that work? Okay. Yeah. I will post in the end. So, this is about the 32nd image where we are on to. All right. So, anybody wants to take this? This is very important and very cliche sort of an image which comes a lot of times. So, this is an infection and yes, the infection indeed is high dated cyst. Yeah, yeah, you'll get prep ladder icon. I mean, everything, rapid revision, snapshot, everything comes under the dream pack. Yeah, so you'll get everything if you get icon. Yes, indeed, this is high dated cyst. Yeah, what is the cause of a high dated cyst? What is the organism? So it is echinococcus, right? So most common species of echinococcus is granulosis. Yeah. So here just a micro correlation for you. So echinococcus granulosis is the most common species. But keep in mind there is one more species called multilocularis. Yeah. So that echinococcus can also cause infection. But that infection does not look like a cyst per se. Multilocularis, M for multilocularis, M for mimic. Remember, it tends to mimic hepatocellular carcinoma. Okay, so that's an interesting fact which I don't think you guys would be aware of. So, hydatid cyst, remember there is one species multilocularis and that presents as a very enhancing sort of a mass and not this typical cyst. Okay, so that is one thing. Apart from this, can you tell me the primary host of echinococcus granulosis since we ventured into micro? And then all of you guys know it, right? It's dog. So you'll get some sort of dog related history, he dog, pet, hey, uh, or something of that sort. And humans, as you know, are accidental hosts as well as dead end hosts, right? We do not transmit the infection any further. Yeah, so this is about the micro aspect of it coming into the uh, radiology aspect of it. So the most common organ to be involved is definitely going to be liver followed by the 
lungs. So through the portal vein, it will reach the liver and via the hepatic veins, it can end up into the pulmonary artery uh, and then go into the lungs, which is the second most common organ. Both of the places we get a sign which is common. Yeah, The name is common, which we call as the water lily sign. So water lily sign is something that I'm going to see in both. So this is an ultrasound of the liver. Anytime you see something black, it's called as an echoic on ultrasound. So an an echoic lesion is a cyst, right? And remember this thumb root. For any sort of a cyst, breast cyst, thyroid cyst, liver cyst, any sort of cyst, the investigation of choice is going to be in ultrasound always, right? So here, hydatid cyst, I am seeing this anechoic lesion and you can also see that there is a membrane which is floating here and hence the name water lily sign. Sometimes you can also get that there is a cyst with multiple daughter cyst, yeah? So this can be called as a honeycomb appearance. You remember H mole we had seen? So just like that H mole, multiple grapes, multiple black lesions. So honeycomb is also something that we can get. And in the liver, uh, in the lung as well, you'll get this cavitating lesion. Yeah, you'll see an air containing walled lesion. And you would see that the crumpled membranes are sitting in the dependent location. And that is also given the name of water lily sign. So incidentally, both the places we have water lily sign. And this is what we are actually looking out for. Correct, as you guys correctly said, we have two classifications. So, there's the older Garbi and the newer WHO classification that we follow, which actually describes the stages. Yeah, so don't really need to remember, but just for a quick reference, I'll tell you that the first is when you have a cyst and you might see a double membrane, which is nothing but the endocyst or the germinal layer. Yeah, in the second stage, now you have this reproduction from the endocyst or the germinal layer and you have the honeycomb cystic uh, appearance. Now in the third stage, we'll have the water lily sign when this membrane is starting to die and it is degenerating. In the fourth stage, you will have debris, which is called as hydatid sand. And finally, fifth stage, how does anything end in the body? It ends with calcification, right? So in the final stage, you will see calcification in the wall or a completely calcified hydatid in the liver. So this, these are the five stages of Garbi or WHO classification that the hydatid goes through. Yes, the, in one more uh, that Alia is saying, one more uh, cutaneous test, hypersensitivity test not done in practice is actually the Cassoni's test. However, in day-to-day uh, -day practice, we would basically do an ELISA for a diagnosis of hydatid. Remember, so we do ELISA, Cassoni is only for historical importance. Treatment is going to be medical, albendazole and there is one more therapeutic option which is called PEAR. What does PEAR stand for? PEAR stands for percutaneous aspiration and injection. Yeah, so what we're going to be doing is I'll first aspirate out the fluid of the cyst and I'll inject these colicidal uh, drugs inside it and I'll re-aspirate it, right? So percutaneous aspiration, injection of colicidal agent, re-aspirate that content and you'll have the hydatid which is dying, all right? So that is where what we can also do for pair. Yeah, so this is all that you need to know in a nutshell for hydatid cyst okay everybody fair enough so this is hydatid this four images four cyanotic heart diseases and their x-rays again something that frequently gets asked the first image was asked in last year's NEET exam right so very easy what is this you can see a, a nice figure of eight or you know if you want to imagine further there's a little snowman sitting here right so this is described by three names one is figure of eight or a snowman sign both of these names are also used for a pituitary macroadenoma. Remember, both of these names you also used for a pituitary macroadenoma, which has this figure of eight orientation. One more name we use here is the cottage loaf, right? Looks like two big loaves over one another called as cottage loaf sign. And where do we see this? This is seen in TAPVC, right? So what is TAPVC? It is totally anomalous pulmonary venous communication. So we know normally these pulmonary veins are going to go into the left atrium. These pulmonary veins are like, no, I want to do something different with my life. So they are saying I will drain in right atrium. Yeah. So they want to drain in the right atrium. So what will happen? So they can have three main routes by which they can go to the right atrium. One is above, above the heart via SVC, which is called as supra cardiac which is your type 1 which is actually going to give you this figure of 8 appearance because all the pulmonary veins are going up 
they are draining into brachiocephalic vein which is going into SVC. So it's because of these veins going through a supracardiac route that I have this figure of 8 appearance. The second very uncommon is the cardiac type where directly the pulmonary veins are going to go into coronary sinus into right atrium. Type 2 cardiac. Type 3 is when the pulmonary veins will go pura ghumke into IVC. Yeah, so that is the infracardiac type. And when they go via infracardiac, do you think it's the longest route? There's the highest chance of getting obstructed. So remember one more one liner here that the type 3 has the worst prognosis. Yeah, so it is the infracardiac type. It will present uh, soon after birth and you will have the worst prognosis here. Apart from this, one more question for every congenital heart disease. Will you see plethora here or oligemia? What is the meaning of these terms? So, whenever we are talking about pulmonary arterial flow, if that is reduced, we call it oligemia. If it is increased, we call it plethora. How does it present on the x-ray? So, if you see a lot of white, white lines, yeah, can you see a lot of whitish hue here? That means lots of vessels are there, right? Because vessels are white. So, that means there is plethora. If it is black, you know, can you see here how the x-rays appear black, the lung fields appear black, that means oligemia. So, what do you see in TAPVC? Very logical. Right heart getting a lot of blood from pulmonary veins. So, RV gets a lot of blood. So, pulmonary artery gets a lot of blood, isn't it? So, what am I going to see here? I am going to see plethora, right? So, here we are going to have plethora. So, these are all the points that we need to know for every congenital heart disease. Okay. On the same lines, what do you see in this second image? We can see that the superior mediastinum is narrow and heart appears very globular. So, this is called as egg on string sign. Where do we see an egg on string appearance? We see it in TGA, transposition of great arteries, which means that now the right, it, right ventricle is giving rise to aorta, the left ventricle is giving rise to pulmonary artery. Can we survive in this vicious cycle where oxygenated blood is moving in one circle, deoxygenated is moving in one circle? We can't, right? So, remember that TGA is actually a septum dependent disease, right? We need some sort of mixing, either ASD, VSD or PDA. Koi na koi ek lagega for that person to survive. And what do you think? We'll see plethora here or oligemia here. You can see a lot of markings, right? So, that only tells you plethora and logically, Left ventricle is giving rise to pulmonary artery, the bigger chamber. That is why you're basically going to have plethora here as well. So, we're going to be seeing plethora here as well. So, this is your egg on string sign because the heart has a very globular sort of a shape. Yeah, there is uh, not much of ventricular enlargement. That is why. Okay. So, this is plethora. The third image, what do you see? That the heart appears like a box. So, this has been called as a box shaped heart. And where is this seen? This is seen in Epstein's anomaly. So, what happens in Epstein's anomaly? Here, you're going to have ventri the ventricle, the right ventricle becomes atrialized. So, there's going to be a huge right atrium and a very small right ventricle. Yeah. So, what will happen to pulmonary arterial flow? Again, reduced because RV is very small. So, now, can you see how the lung fields are also appearing blacker? So, we are having oligemia here, right? So, this is about Epstein's atrialization of the ventricle. That is why, again, one more medicine correlation or pediatrics correlation in this case, when you look at the ECG of this person, you will have a very, you will have very large P waves, yeah, because P waves arise from the right atrium. So, you will have very large P waves, which are called as Himalayan P waves. Apart from that, you can also have associated right bundle branch block. Yeah, so these are findings that they might give you with Epstein's. And one more history that they'll give you. What is the maternal drug that they can give you here? It is the intake of lithium. Yeah, so it is because of a teratogenic effect of lithium that you can have Epstein's anomaly. And finally, the easiest of them all, when you see a very typical boot-shaped heart, what is this? This is your tetralogy of palate. So this is also called as cor and sabot in Latin. Yeah. So, boot-shaped heart, core and sabot is going to be seen in tetralogy of phallot. I'm sure you guys know the four components of tetralogy of phallot. We are going to have ventricular septal defect. You'll have right ventricular hypertrophy, overriding of aorta and infundibular pulmonary stenosis. Yeah, so these are the four components. If it's a pentology, you'll also have an associated atrial 
septal defect. So now, when there is infundibular PS, what will you see? Oligemia or plethora, pulmonary stenosis, less flow, right? And that's why you can see black, black hearts. This is a repeat question. So TOF, remember, will also have oligemia. So this in a nutshell takes care of everything, in fact, that you need to know about all of these cyanotic heart diseases, right? So these are all the signs and the x-rays that are frequently asked in the exams. Going on, so this was image 33, but this had four images, yeah? So technically, it has been... Yeah, anyways, so 34. So what do you see here? Very typical, just the name that we need to know, okay? Thank you so much, Saji. So this is like a good revision of that class, right? Yeah, so you can see that this is an IVP, intravenous pyelography study. You can see the contrast in the pelvic allicial system. And what we can see here in the distal end, there is this bulbous dilatation, which is described as the adder head or the cobra head sign. And this is seen in a condition called Uretrocele. So, uretrocele, remember, is a cystic dilatation. The distal end of the ureter becomes cystic, again, dilated with urinia. So, uretrocele is cystic dilatation of the ureter. So, this can be a, a simple, oh, sorry, this can be a simple uretrocele, which is like in this case, or sometimes it can be associated with an ectopic opening of the ureter, right? Sometimes it can open in the prostatic urethra can open in the vagina in female. So that is an ectopic urethral opening and that can also have a urethral seal. All right. So these are the two types that are associated with it. And remember the clinical presentation of ectopic uh, opening is going to be dribbling of urine. So they'll give you the history of, uh, you know, continuous dribbling of urine in a child and you always think of ectopic opening. This is a repeat question of last year. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. All right. So this is about that. What is this? A bone and they'll give you a history that there is discharging sinus, first discharging sinus. Pneumatocel versus tension pneumothorax, so there is no similarity, no? Tension pneumothorax, but the clinical diagnosis. Just pneumothorax, basically, remember, we'll have air in the pleural space, you know? So, you'll see underlying lung and you'll have air. In pneumatocel, within a normal lung, you'll have an air-containing lesion, a black-black lesion, okay? So, that is a pneumatocel, okay? Correct. This is chronic osteomyelitis. Not just any osteomyelitis. Chronic osteomyelitis will be discharging pus sinus. So, here they'll ask you the parts, right? That is the frequent question that they ask you. So, the inner central white part, can you see? In radiology, white we call sclerotic. Yeah, so this is white or sclerotic. S for sclerotic. S for sequestrum. So, this is a sequestrum. What is a sequestrum? It is the dead bone. Why is it white? Because nobody wants to go give blood vessels to a dead bone, right? So, there is no demineralization because there are no vessels. So, it remains white because kuch turnover hoi nira. Up after this, can you see one rim which is the black, which we call as lucency, which is marked by the arrow. So, there is this black zone surrounding the sequestrum. What do we call that? That is called as involucrum. Why is it black or lucent? Because it is not bone. It is granulation tissue. Yeah, so chronic in osteomyelitis, inflammation, granulation tissue is going to be loosened or black. And finally, do you see that there is now this defect of bone here? There is this defect that has happened from where the bony particles and the pus is getting released. This is called as the cloaca, which is the defect from which the pus will be discharging. All right, so these are the parts of chronic osteomyelitis. Next, again, one number but four images. So, this is again a very important slide which is showing you the progression of a normal intrauterine pregnancy. So, I'll just quickly tell you the timeline of the events which happen. So, we have a timeline on TVS and TAS wherein just remember TVS is AGE by one week. We are going into the uterus so it's more sensitive. It can pick up findings one week earlier. So, what is the first change guys that you're going to be seeing? This tiny sac of fluid, which is the gestational sac. So, G-sac is the earliest finding that you will see. It comes somewhere between 4 to 4.5 weeks on a TVS. For TS, just add one week. Yeah, so it becomes 5 to 5.5 weeks. So, this is the earliest finding. G-sac, remember, will be a black fluid collection, which is slightly eccentric within the endometrium. Yeah, so this is white endometrium, will be slightly eccentric, which is called as the intradecidual sign and sometimes you will see two walls of this g-sac which is called as the double decidual sign 
So these are two signs of a two gestational sac. Intra decidual, double decidual. Right? Remember, do not mix it up with double bleb. It is double decidual. After this, the next thing that's going to come around within the G sac. Do you see one ecogenic ring which has come? What is this ecogenic ring which has developed? It is the yolk sac. When is the yolk sac going to come? Just one week after this, right? So it comes at 5.5 weeks. For this, we just add one more week to it. Yeah. So this is yolk sac. So this is basically the only number you have to remember or back if it plus one plus one. Khel na hai. So this is yolk sac. After yolk sac, what is going to develop? So yolk sac gives the nutrition to the embryo. So this is the G sac. This is the yolk sac. And now you will have this ecogenic embryo which develops, right? So the third finding is going to be the embryo or we can call it the fetal pool. Yeah, so this will come when? Just add one more week, 6 to 6.5 weeks and then 7.75 weeks, right? And at this point only, what is the first change that you're going to see? You will start to see the heart beating, the first system to develop cardiovascular system, right? And finally, what develops one week later? You have the amnion. This is the question of this year's meet. So this is GSAC. Let me zoom it for you. So this is GSAC. Do you see this is the yolk sac and this is the fetal pole? Yeah. Now one more ring has developed. One more bleb has developed. What is this? This is the amnion. Yeah. So this is what is the most important. And because now you are seeing two rings. Yeah. You are seeing these two rings. This has been described as the double bleb sign. Yeah. So this is the double bleb sign, which is your repeat question. And when do you see? One week later. So 7 to 7.5 weeks. On a TES, it will be 8 to 8.5 weeks. Yeah, so this basically summarizes your entire intrauterine early pregnancy ultrasound. This is the order in which we are going to be seeing things. Okay, fair enough. Everybody do not mix double bleb with double decibel. That is the summary. Okay. No, wo galat hai. heart doesn't beat from four weeks. Heart uh, to G sac na. Heart kaan se beat karega G sac mein. So you need fetal heart, fetal pole for fetal heart to develop. Okay. Right. What do we have here? So this you can see within the brain there are multifocal lesions yeah so this is a starry sky appearance which is associated with ncc so this is neurocysticercosis means there are all of these colex circus means colex or larva which are in the form of cysts and this is neurocysticercosis multifocal lesions called as starry sky appearance However, it's not always that you will see everything, right? So, you will see basically a single lesion also. So, if there's a solitary lesion, it can present as a focal seizure. If there are multifocal lesions, you will have generalized tonic-clonic seizure. So, the clinical feature is going to be that of seizures. Yeah. Apart from that, uh, what else do you want to remember? What is the staging for NCC? We follow a staging system called Escobar staging. In Escobar staging, there are four stages. I just want you to remember basically that in stage 1 and stage 4, we are not going to be having any edema. So, stage 1 is the very early stage when it's just a cyst, water-filled, vesicular stage. So, here there are going to be no seizures, no clinical feature, no edema. In stage 4, you are going to have the end stage. Again, a white calcified lesion. Can you see how in the CT we are seeing all of this as white? So, this is your stage 4, which is your calcified nodular stage. Again, there is going to be no seizure. Why am I telling you this? Because this is a repeat aim question. In what stage of NCC do you expect no seizure or no edema in the patient? So, it's going to be stage 1 or stage 4. So, it's a controversial question because in the option, they had given all four options. And which one do you choose? Because both of them do not have. So, in that case, I want you to choose stage four if both the options are there. Because here, definitely you will not have. In stage one, sometimes you can have one odd lesion which has progressed, you know. So, that is the logic behind it. Otherwise, technically, dono mein hi nahi aega. Okay? So, this is about that. We also follow the LMP only. Yeah, LMP only we follow for... Uh, you know, period of gestation, but ultrasound, may, what is the, uh, you know, parameter that we will take to determine the gestational age? It is crown rump length. Yeah, so the moment this fetal pole develops, I will measure the maximum craniocaudal length of this fetal pole. And once the fetus becomes, uh, you know, we can see the head and the rump, we measure the crown rump length and this is the most accurate. 
या फॉर डिटरमाइनिंग पीरियड ऑफ जेस्टेशन ओके सो इफ दे गिव यू इन द हिस्ट्री की पेशेंट की एल एम पी याद नहीं है पेशेंट इज फॉर गॉटन और इरेग्युलर साइकिल हाउ विल यू डिटरमाइन द जेस्टेशनल एज इट्स ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ ग्राउंड राउंड लेंथ ओके right coming back uh, to ncc so this is about neurocystic sarcosis so just to take you through the images this is a t2 weighted mri lesion you will see that there are multiple lesions and there is a central scolex yeah on the ct scan in the last stage you will see all of these calcified lesions and sometimes if you if you are in the middle stage stage 2 or stage 3 where the disease is active when you give a cct when you do a contrast you will see that the it is a ring enhancing lesion so this is also a differential for a ring enhancing lesion which means peripheral enhancing lesion so how do you distinguish it so you will see one ring enhancing lesion and there will be a central scolex again so now taking you through various differentials what are the other infections which can also give you ring enhancing lesion do you want to take a guess aur kya cheeze hai something that we'll always think of in our country it's going to be tb right so two main infections i want you to think of as differentials for ring enhancing lesion so there is image a and image b and i'm giving you an mr spectroscopy which is common to both of these infections so do you know what mr spectroscopy is it is when we take a measure of the metabolites so mainly we will have three main peaks we'll have creat we'll have choline we'll have na do you see one extra peak here and if you can read what is written it is showing you a lipid peak yeah a lipid lactate peak or a lipid peak this is again your repeat aims question that there is a ring enhancing lesion with a lipid peak on mr spectroscopy what is your diagnosis so here i need you to have two things in your mind look at two things one month round week if you see that the lesions are around the brain stem both of them are going to be ring enhancing if they are around the brain stem and if they are conglomerating remember this word any time things are conglomerating it's more often than not it's going to be tuberculosis yeah so do you see all of these lesions which are merging with one another around the brain stem so this is the mid brain that you are seeing here so this is tb it's going to show you a lipid peak apart from this the other buzzword if i give you patient has hiv aids and now those ring enhancing lesions are in the basal ganglia what is your diagnosis going to be can you see these ring enhancing lesions in the basal ganglia which will also have which will also have a lipid peak what is your diagnosis guys the most common infection in hiv aids toxoplasmosis right so remember dono mein hi necrosis hai dono mein hi lipid peak milega right so tb toxo hiv ke bina they will not ask toxoplasmosis right so that is something keep in mind hiv aids and basal ganglia sunte even dimag mein ghanti should go that they are talking about toxo and brain stem conglomerating think of tuberculosis so is this uh, clear to you everybody so this is about the three ring enhancing lesions which will present as infection let's look at one more ring enhancing uh, lesion which is going to present as infection fever and focal neurological deficits what is this no soap bubble is not toxo so right if we want to expand this so if you have hiv aids and if you have basal ganglia and instead of a ring enhancing lesion you are seeing a very t2 hyper intense lesion which is soap bubble then you want to think of cryptococcoma right so you want to think of crypto cocomas or cryptococcus basically right so that is going to be the buzzword t2 hyper intense soap bubble in an hiv aids patient theek okay? hai now talking about this lesion again a repeat neat question so what do you see here again a big ring enhancing now it's not small anymore it's a big ring enhancing lesion and your clue right here is that there is what what is the sequence remember jab mr mein koi kuch na dikhe you don't see the bone you don't see anything outside just the brain this is a diffusion weighted imaging and anything which is white on dwi means that there is diffusion restriction so whenever you see diffusion restriction in a complete lesion it means it is filled completely with pus so this is how a typical brain abscess is going to appear right and where is this located very nicely picked up by all of you this is in the temporal lobe right so this is in the temporal lobe and this was the exact question which was asked they given you a temporal lobe abscess and asked you to diagnose it okay so remember ring enhancing lesions are all of these 
एंड फाइनली जस्ट टू यू नो गिव यू क्लोजर ऑन सी एन एस इन्फेक्शन यूजली इसमें से एक ना एक सवाल विल ऑलवेज कम इन एम्स या एंड येस कार्तिक लिपिड पीक विल बी सीन इन बोथ टी बी एंड टॉक्सो दैट्स वाई क्लब दम टूगेदर सो दैट यू कैन रिमेंबर ठीक है या वट इज दिस नाउ विच इन्फेक्शन इज दिस सो आई हैव गिवन यू टू क्लूज हियर before that i'll tell you the clinical feature also that give you more clues so here is a child who is presenting to you with behavioral abnormalities he is having behavioral changes now which tells you that okay maybe his limbic system is affected yeah maybe the areas which are affected are the frontal lobe the cingulate gyrus the limbic system is getting affected you did a csf tap and you found xanthochromia Yeah, when you saw the cells, you could also find RBCs within the tap, and there was no traumatic uh, tap. You know, you could find RBCs and you could find xanthochromia. Now, when you did the MRI of this patient, you found that on the flare sequence, you are seeing that all of this edema is centered around the frontal lobe, around the temporal lobe, around the amygdala. So the entire limbic system is getting hyper intensity. It is all involved. There is encephalitis. So what is the predisposition? frontal lobe temporal lobe cingulate gyrus insular cortex you know so all of these are your areas which are predisposed which are all parts of limbic system behavior containing and can somebody tell me what is this sequence where you start to see black black blooming something that we have read in diffuse axonal injury also so this is again swi or you can also call it a gradient echo image right so this is your gradient t2 star is ko hum likhte hain t2 star image so swr when you see the ventricles are white you can also call it gradient t2 star image so very thing which is black in swr a gradient sequence means it is either hemorrhage or calcification what is more likely in this case because there is xanthochromia rbc is going in we know now that there is hemorrhage so at the end of this what are the buzzwords in this diagnosis one the limbic system gets involved second this is a hemorrhagic encephalitis so what is this hemorrhagic encephalitis it is herpes simplex virus encephalitis which is hsv encephalitis is more common hsv1 or hsv2 both of them can show hsv1 is more common so you will get history if you ask history you might get history of herpes uh, you know labialis or uh, you know uh some sort of an oral involvement okay so this is about hsv1 encephalitis okay everybody is everything about hsv encephalitis clear i i think it's a very important uh, infection okay right changing gears from brain infections to kidney infection but the pathology still remains same something that can involve any organ of our body in our country we will see all kinds of infections here correct what you see here is this completely calcified kidney yeah this is an abdominal x ray i have not given any sort of contrast until i see that the kidney is completely white so this is a patti kidney which is a completely calcified kidney and this is seen in the end stage of tuberculosis yeah so this is the end stage of tuberculosis this is a completely calcified kidney and will it have any function no so this is also called as auto nephrectomy where the body has killed the kidney yeah so there is auto nephrectomy So there is no function here. So this is patti kidney. One last image for the day. What do you see? First of all, can you identify the investigation? When you see X-ray, when you see white white endoscope, and you are seeing that okay, CBD may contrast hai, MPD may contrast hai. This is ERCP, endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreaticography. And what you can see, the MPD will never be so dilated. So what's the reference? MPD can never be equal to CBD. When it's become equal to CBD, it's definitely dilated. Yeah, so the MPD is dilated, and you see that these side branches have opened up, and it has a very dilated side branchy sort of an appearance. So this is called as the chain of Lake's appearance, which is seen in chronic pancreatitis. So if somebody will ask you what is the gold standard or what is the investigation of choice for chronic pancreatitis, it is going to be ERCP. by gold standard because we can put in stents we can remove these stones right so if there are a lot of times stones will form in the duct so using ercp you can remove those stones you can also put in a stent across the duct if it is obstructed so all of these things are possible that's why it's the best investigation for chronic pancreatitis okay so this is where we'll stop we'll meet again tomorrow 5 o'clock 
tomorrow we'll have a longer class perhaps for 45 minutes but today it's going to be a short class but i'll meet you all again in like one and a, one hour i'll see you all at six o'clock on the app today is going to be a very important class especially those of you are targeting i and i ct should attend it because there are sure short questions which come from uh, biostats and epidemia yeah so see you all on the app i'll post the link again okay so that is about it no cbd is not dilated pragya it's just the mpd i was telling as a reference that when mpd becomes equivalent to cbd that is when you know mpd is dilated okay right so that is about it nephrocalcinosis pulchit remember you won't see the complete kidney getting calcified what you will see is so there can be two kinds of nephrocalcinosis it can either be cortical nephrocalcinosis or medullary so cortical mein apne ko dikhega white white in the cortex in medullary nephrocalcinosis you will see the medullary pyramids getting calcified so you will never see this outer margin yeah what will you see you will just see either this white rim or this white rim you can never see a completely white kidney one more differential is a staghorn calculus yeah so staghorn calculus you will see ki bahar ka outline nahi calcified you will see that under the pelvic calcial system aisa sort of a configuration is you know white so this is your staghorn so these are the three options that you had in your question this answer tha particularly okay ERCP is associated with injury of pancreas. Yeah, that is acute pancreatitis. Yeah, so ERCP technically is associated with a risk of acute pancreatitis, but this is chronic. Yeah, this is already chronic. Pancreas has lost all of its function. Got that? Says on. All right. Okay. Thank you so much. See you all tomorrow and uh, today for the PSN class. Okay.